back uh, in the last few lectures we have presented basic concepts and then we also presented traditional logic which has remained as a paradigm uh, in logics for more than 2000 years that is Aristotelian logics. In fact Aristotelian logics needs to be presented uh, while studying the predicate logics in fact uh, they are closer to predicate logics than the propositional logics that we are going to study right now. So what we will be doing uh, uh, now is we will be studying the basic concepts of propositional logic. So uh, as the name suggests propositional logic is a study of uh, is a logic of propositions and then uh, in this uh, uh, lecture what we will be doing is we will be talking about what we mean by propositional logic uh, basic introduction of propositional logic and we try to cover uh, the syntax of a propositional logic. So in this uh, uh, the coming lecture forthcoming lectures what we will be covering is like this first we will start with the syntax and semantics of propositional logic. So any language has its own syntax and semantics so in the same way language uh, propositional logic is also viewed as a language which has its own syntax and all just like our English language has its own syntax and semantics and then we will talk about how this syntax and semantics are related to each other. So just like that in propositional logic is also a kind of a language so which has its own syntax and semantics and we will be talking about in this lecture we will be focusing on syntax part and all. So later we will be studying uh, some of the translations of English language sentences into the language of propositional logics that is what we, are, we will be studying from the next few lectures and then we will be studying uh, three important kinds of statements which occur in propositional logic they are the statements which are always true which are considered to be tautologies and the statements which are considered to be always false they are considered to be contradictions and the statements which are neither either true or false uh, are considered to be contingent kind of propositions and all. So we will classify our group of statements into three, three categories and then we will only be interested in tautologies because uh, it so happened that all the tautologies in our language that is the language of propositional logic they are all turned out to be valid formulas and all. So ultimately our uh, journey begins with uh, uh, constructing some kind of well formed formulas so that is what uh, syntax will take care of it and then after constructing uh, basic formulas etc and all then we will talk about what we mean by these formulas and all that means we will start giving some kind of truth conditions to a given formula that means meaning of a given formula means giving truth conditions to a given well formed formula. And all. So then we will talk about validity in the context of syntax and in the context of semantics and then we will be talking about some of the important decision procedure methods which tells us whether or not a given sentence is valid or when two groups of statements are consistent to each other or when uh, how can we check whether a given formula is a tautology or a contingency or a contradiction etc all these things are will come under the category of decision procedure methods. So there are few decision procedure methods to start with we will begin with uh, the simplest possible method that is the truth table method and uh, truth table method works as long as the number of variables are considered to be less in number that means two or three variables are there then it will be easy for us to handle and then if, if it won't uh, if number of variables increases five to six and then there will be 2 to the power of n entries in the truth table so things will be difficult for us but maybe a computer can manage it in a better way but uh, for us it will be difficult to handle. So then we will be talking about one interesting and important method which serves as core of this uh, course and all so that is the semantic tableaux method or it is also called as tree method etc. And all. So then there is another method with which you can talk about validity etc and all so that means in that method what we will be doing is we will reduce the complex well formed formula into the, that well formed formula consists of implication double implication etc and then we will reduce it to a formula which consists of only negation disjunction and conjunction. So if you can reduce that complex formula into this particular normal forms which are usually we usually call then these thing these formulas are called as conjunctive and disjunctive normal forms and then once you reduce the formula into conjunctive and disjunctive normal forms you can clearly you will easily come to know whether a given formula is a tautology or not all these things we will be studying in 
uh, in the forthcoming lectures and then we will also talk about one of the interesting methods that is resolution and refutation method. So these are all semantic kind of methods there are some other methods which which you can still talk about validity in the context of syntax so that is what we call it as syntactic consequence or syntactic validity etc. So there we will study the natural deduction method with which you can talk about some of the syntactic consequences etc which are there are some formulas which are obviously valid and all those things which we talk we talk about in the context of syntax we present natural deduction method. So now what is propositional logic? Uh, and why we need to study propositional logics. So first of all it is a systematic study of logical propositions, uh, logical proposition in the sense that a proposition is a sentence which can be clearly spoken as either true or false. In the basic concepts we have, we have said that uh, language can be used in three purposes one is logical usage another one is uh, expressive usage and then uh, there is other kind of uh, way in which you can use the language for example language can also be used to express some kind of uh, feelings etc. So we will be considering or we will be interested in only those statements which can be clearly spoken as either true or false suppose if I say that this is a chalk piece if it is referring to the fact etc and all then actually this is a chalk piece and that this statement is considered to be true. So only those sentences we will be taking into consideration and then these sentences are combined with the help of what we call it as some kind of truth functional connectives which are considered to be or and if not if and only if these are the things which we express it in the English language but in the formal language we express it in terms of its own symbols and all. So we will talk about it a little bit later about these symbols with which you can represent these uh, phrases or and if not and if and only if. So proposition logic is a systematic study of these things the logic of propositions or logic of a uh, study of the connectives etc all consider and all come under the category of propositional logic and we it only solely studies about these connectives only and there are no quantifiers etc and all in this kind of language and all. quantifiers in a sense for all x there exists some x etc and all is the most simplistic kind of language uh, which usually uh, with which you can represent mathematical kind of reasoning and all. So one should note that there are different kinds of reasoning uh, which we have said in the beginning of this course that you know reasoning can be divided into deductive and inductive kind of reasoning and deductive uh, in the deductive reasoning uh, propositional language uh, propositional logic is one of the outcomes of this deductive uh, reasoning and all. There are other kinds of deductive reasoning uh, in which uh, some of the fundamental principles of logic uh, they are weakened and all and then we will enter into some other kinds of logics which are called as non classical logics. So, so it is also considered to be uh, a formal language which is used to express sentential formulas or sentential language and all or it is also called as a sentential language etc. The most basic logical inference are about uh, usually they are expressions that are combinations of sentences involving not or and if and if and only if it is very difficult for us to talk about uh, connecting two sentences without using this logical connectives and all. Suppose if you say this is a this is a chalk piece and this is a duster and all if you want to combine these two sentences there should be some kind of uh, connective which can should connect these two sentences and all. So in that case either you say this is a chalk piece or this is a duster in that case it is P or Q if it is chalk piece and it is a duster it is called as P it is expressed as P and Q and all. So in order to join this uh, atomic propositions which we call uh, atomic propositions are the propositions which cannot be further reduced into any other kind of proposition and all just like P's Q's R's etc they are all called as atomic propositions and all. So these atomic propositions combine with these logical connectives and form complex formulas and all or compound formulas etc. So, so this is also considered to be truth functional calculus or it is also called as propositional calculus it is a study of those statements whose truth values are determined by the truth value of their uh, component parts. One of the important point one needs to note is this that a truth value of a given formula 
in the proposition logic is solely determined by whatever truth values that its individual constituents takes in all. Suppose in the formula P or Q the truth value of P or Q is solely determined by whatever values P and Q takes in all and depending upon how the logical connective that is in this case R behaves in all. So we will be talking about semantics under the context when we talk about semantics of propositional logic we will see how this these connectives behaves in all R and implies etc in all. So they behave, behave in a certain way in the ordinary day to day language and as far as possible we are trying to convert we are trying to translate the English language statements into the appropriate language of propositional logic. So in the process of translation one might even be disappointed for example a simple example could be like this usually we say when we are sick we go to the doctor and all and this can be uh, put into this format. So I became sick and I went to the doctor so that is what we usually do and all and that is represented as A and B. The same sentence can be represented as B and A also because A and B and B and A are identical to each other they are logically equivalent to each other because they have only same truth values and all. Suppose if you say that I went to the doctor and I became sick so these two are different things you know nobody goes to the doctor to become sick you know. So I went to the doctor and I became sick is totally different from I, I, I became sick and I went to the doctor and all there's, there seems to be some kind of other operators which, uh, which are important to analyze these particular kinds of statements. And all. So that means truth value of A and B is not solely determined by the truth value of A and B which is uh, uh, but it depends upon some other extra logic uh, some other factors and all. So these kinds of things are called as intentional logics and all intentional logics are not part of our course and all but uh, we will be talking about only extensional logic that means the truth value of a given compound formula is solely determined by the truth value of its individual constituents. So, uh, to, so to motivate ourselves uh, we will ask this fundamental question where we use this propositional logic and all. So usually in general you know we present propositional logic uh, as a formal language which tries to capture basically mostly mathematical reasoning and all or it can be used to capture logical reasoning and the argumentation that involved in day to day discourse but uh, not all the all kinds of propositions can be captured in this propositional logic and all. For example if you say all birds fly Tweety is a bird and Tweety flies and then you got an extra information that Tweety is a penguin and penguins does not fly. So in that case you need to give up some of the conclusions that you have derived earlier that is all birds flies or maybe Tweety is a bird that flies there are some other things which you have derived earlier we need to withdraw those conclusions which is not permitted in the language of propositional logic. So these, uh, these are the cases which come under the category of defaults and default reasoning is not the one which we are trying to consider here. There are many other kinds of reasoning like counterfactual reasoning uh, for example if you say if I had become the prime minister I would wipe off all the corruption etc and all. So that means you have not become the prime minister that means the antecedent of that particular conditional is false and uh, the semantics of proposition logic tells us that if the antecedent is false uh, irrespective of whatever the consequent uh, irrespective of whatever truth value the consequent takes your conditional the truth value of the conditional is of always true you know in that case there is no distinction between uh, if I had become the prime minister of India let us say pigs would fly and if you say if I had become the prime minister of India pigs would not fly it, it does not make any big difference in all because in both the cases the antecedent is false and irrespective of whether pigs flies and pigs would not fly it does not matter it makes the whole conditional sentence if uh, I had become the prime minister of India pigs would fly is true in the same way equally uh, if I had become the Prime Minister of India pigs would not fly will also be true you know. So these are the things which we do not want in day to day discourse because this goes against our intuition. So in that case we need to uh, uh, maybe we need to extend this propositional logics and we need to talk about some other things you know. So that is not what is of concern to us but uh, there are some cases in which the propositional logics works better mostly the mathematical reasoning you know. And uh, the another interesting point is is that proposition logics are directly used in analyzing digital switching circuits and all. We have a simple uh, complex digital switching circuits which has on and off switches and all 
there are various kinds of uh, gates that we use and all and or uh, any NAND gate etc NOR gate etc XOR gate etc all these things uh, the underlying logics are uh, nothing but uh, boolean logics I mean boolean logics uh, are usually is also called as prepositional logics and all because prepositional logics is uh, uh, they are talking in the same way as bool represented these kind of reasoning with the help of algebraic operations plus and uh, multiplication and these plus uh, in propositional logic stands for or the connective or and multiplication stands for the connective and so there are more or less uh, the principle of duality uh, helps us in translating the boolean algebra into uh, the language of propositional logic now which we'll talk about it little bit later so uh, you are given a complex uh, circuit and all so you will cons you will translate that complex switching circuit into an appropriate formula of a propositional logic again a complex formula and all you will forget about the, the switching circuits for a while and then you simplify that complex formula maybe it is p in plus q in plus r or something like that p r q or something like that big compound formula and then you will reduce or simplify it using de Morgan's rules so there are all kinds of rules law of absorption law of distribution etc and all then you simplify the logical formula and all. so then again you will go back to the switching circuit and then you will directly study the simplified formula and all a complex formula let us say it is reduced into just p or q and all that means if you have a complex formula which involves four or five switches and all which somehow reduces to just p or q and all that means you just require only two switches that means the complex digital circuit is exactly same as the simplified digital circuit that is the simplified formula that we got we arrived at so in that sense proposition logics are directly used in analyzing only simple digital switching circuits where you have on and off switches so uh, we can also study how these logical connectives behaves by using uh, SNAND and OR gates etc exclusive OR gates etc that is a practical application of this propositional logic and one of the most important thing is is that suppose if you want to talk to the machines etc and all if you talk in English and all it won't uh, help us uh, in any way it won't answer you anything so the first thing one needs to do is to represent our knowledge knowledge claims etc and all into some kind of formal language and all the most simplistic kind of formal language that we use is the propositional language of propositional logic which is also considered to be a formal language once you represent it in terms of some kind of formal language then the next thing is you know one can write one can prove some theorems and all and one can write programs one can write algorithms etc and all, all these things follows you know so basically propositional logics are used as a knowledge representation representation tool in artificial intelligence and even in the computer science so our concern is to capture the mathematical reasoning or the reasoning that is that we use it in as far as possible in the day to day discourse as well so so what is this propositional logic so when we study the history of logics into consideration in greater detail I would I will talk about how this proposition logics originated originated and how Aristotelian logics were gradually logicians have gradually had to ignore this Aristotelian logics because it could not account for many things although it can still be used as one of the paradigm cases of logics and all because it dominated for more than 2000 years now so one can again fall back on Aristotelian logics and you can talk about some of the important points in uh, important things that we can borrow from Aristotelian logics to the modern logic okay what is this propositional logic it is a branch of formal logic formal logic in a sense that there is a distinction between content and form and all suppose if your argument involves the analysis of just forms only like uh, uh, all x or y all y or z and all x or z and all in that particular kind of argument or pattern so what is important is the form all uh, x implies y y implies z then x implies z and all 
the only form matters and all it does not matter what you substitute for x y z and all. it can be donkeys it can be cats it can be anything and all. So, whatever you substitute into x and y and z suppose if it is in this particular kind of form x in plus y y in plus z then x has to be z m as far as you believe in the true value logic that means your sentences are only true or false uh, it cannot be neither true nor false all these things are ruled out. So, then uh, the formal logic means uh, you are studying the uh, you are interested in the forms of an argument and all, but there are some other arguments which we have presented in the basic concepts uh, while studying about the basic concepts they are like this. For example, if you say all atoms are invisible, uh, so all uh, atoms uh, all this room is made up of atoms for example, let us say this room is made up of uh, atoms, atoms are invisible, so this room is invisible you know. So, you will not be able to find out any flaw in this argument unless and until you analyze the, uh, the terms that you have used in your argument and all. So, in that case there is a shift in the meaning of the usage of the term atoms. So, in the first uh, sentence it is used in a different sense, in the second sentence it is used in a totally different sense now. But in propositional logics or the formal logics which we take into consideration it is presupposed that there is no shift in the meaning of the words or phrases that you have used in your uh, logics. So, it is a branch of formal logic where the basic units are sentences. So, all the sentences will take this uh, simple letters and all which are called as sentential variables. Suppose if you want to represent Socrates is wise it can be represented as a simple letter S or it can be represented as a simple letter W and all. It is up to us to take our own letters and all because we have any a number of letters which are available. So, you can take any other letter and all it can be represented as even alpha also. So, it only deals with the constants that stands for entire natural language sentences and the ways these constants may be combined to form more complex expressions. What are these constants and are implies if and only if etcetera. So, we have some sentences uh, which are out there and then we have some logical connectives and these sentences combined with these logical connectives and form uh, a complex compound formula and all. So, now uh, sentential logic is also concerned with the way in which simple sentences are combined by means of uh, sentential operators again negation, conjunction, disjunction etcetera and they form the most complex uh, kinds of sentences and all. And you have to note that sentential logics or propositional logics or propositional calculus all these things are one of the same and all. So, they have no quantifiers and all. So, quantifiers in a sense for all x uh, there exists some x etcetera and all. For example, if you want to represent all men are mortal it is simply propositional language you represent it as m a letter m or something like that. You represent it in terms of uh, quantifiers and all you will say for all x x is a implies x is mortal and all. So, we do not have quantifiers and all that sets uh, some kind of a limitation to the propositional logic. And if you want to make your language little bit richer and all then you need to add this quantifiers and all. Um, but again propositional logics on the one hand they are uh, elegant very simple and it has wonderful features now like uh, there are wonderful features everyone every logician would be striving for that is consistency completeness uh, etcetera and all. A system is called as consistent especially when you are not able to derive you cannot derive both x and not x at the same time from the same set of assumptions etc. If you can derive both x and not x then your system is considered to be inconsistent now. Suppose if you talk about it is raining and it is not raining given some kind of assumptions then this there seems to be something wrong with your system not wrong is a system is called as inconsistent and logicians will hate this kind of inconsistency in fact even mathematicians as well inconsistency is treated as some kind of hell why because if you are given an inconsistent statement you can derive anything any kind of strange kind of proposition and all without violating the truth value of uh, your com your propositional formulas and all. So, that is one problem which arises. So, we look for only consistent kind of uh, we look for a system to be consistent in. and the second wonderful feature is this completeness. And all. So, there are in our language that we are going to construct. Uh, we will form some kind of well formed formulas some well formed formulas are considered to be valid some are invalid and all. So, all the well formed formulas uh, which are considered to be valid 
so they are all can be provable and all so you have to find a proof for this all the well formed formulas and all and in the same way if all the proof uh, all the formulas that you have proved that has to be at the end of the day it has to be true and all so you prove lots of things and all but at the same time it is false and all it is no you are not you are not served your purpose it is not served your purpose and all at the end of the day that statement has to be proved uh, has to be true and all that means it has to be tautology and all so whatever is provable is true and whatever is true is provable then the then your system is called as complete and one of the wonderful features of this proposition logic it is considered to be the minimal kind of representation of your knowledge these are consistent complete compatible all these wonderful features are there uh, present in this propositional logic once you add quantifiers etc and all then the complexity arises and uh, we'll talk about uh, incompleteness etc in the context of godel at the end of uh, this thing while talking about predicate logic we'll talk about godel's incompleteness theorem which tells us that there are some formulas within uh, the language of first order logic in a sense first order logic means it is, a, it is proposition logic plus predicate logic in those languages uh, in particular uh, in the predicate logic uh, there are some formulas uh, which uh, which are obviously true but it cannot find uh, proofs and all so that makes the system incomplete and all so it has no quantifies the proposition logic has no quantifies and the other thing is is that the sentences that are generated from the other sentential connectives are considered to be compound sentences and all so you have some sentences like it is raining etc and all and your other statement is grass is wet and all if you combine these two sentences with uh, it is raining uh, i mean uh, implies grass is wet and all that will become a com compound kind of sentence so this uh, out of these connectives and or uh, implies if and only if there are binary connectives because it connects at least two sentences and all whereas the negation is considered to be a unary connective and all so suppose if you say this example mars is a planet which has no satellites suppose if you say mars is a planet and mars has satellites and all so it is a conjunction of two statements and all if at least one of these statements is false then it makes the whole conjunct false and all that is a way that conjunction behaves and all suppose if you say mars is a planet which has no satellite that that makes uh, maybe making the sentence true and all the second sentence in particular at least one of the conjunct is false then obviously it makes the whole conjunct false and all even though mars is a planet is true but the second one mars has satellites etc if that has to be so that is false and all it makes the whole sentence false and all so we'll talk about truth and falsity is a little bit later so these are some of the pertinent or fundamental questions that we will be asking ourselves which motivates us to consider or study the proposition logics which are considered to be the minimal kind of logics uh, with which you can represent basically mathematical reasoning so these are some of the questions the first question is what does it mean to say that one sentence logically follow from others certainly from others that is what is validity will take care of this particular kind of question and all so logic is after all all about, all about what follows from what you have few sentences and why after all why we need to use tools of logic and all you have few sentences and then we want to move from these two sentences to another sentence and all so there are some kinds of techniques which we use uh, either it the the way you move from premises to the conclusion if it requires that requires some kind of necessity some kind of certainty or uh, if you don't want any new information to be there in the premises in the in, don't want any new information to be there in the conclusion which is not there in the premises etc then we use deductive reasoning and all in the same way if you want uh, we have to few premises to begin with and you want to conclude something then uh, conclude something and then your argument uh, can only be strong or weak and all we cannot be 100% certain etc and all in that context you use inductive reasoning and all natural sciences usually follow this particular kind of reasoning and all so this is what we have studied in the basic concepts and all so one of the fundamental questions uh, um, any logician would be interested to ask is what follows from what so that validity the concept of validity will take care of this particular kind of thing and all we know that a particular argument is valid for example uh, it is raining and grass is wet and all from that you can derive uh, it is raining you know 
a and b you can derive a. So, how do we know that uh, this a and b a can be derived now is there any logical procedure with which you can tell us you can tell whether it is raining is derived from it is raining and grass is wet. So, if a sentence does follow logically from the others what are the methods of proof etc which are necessary to establish this particular kind of fact. So, in that context we use truth table method we use semantic tablox method we use some other interesting and important methods and all. And then after finding out uh, all these things we will ask ourselves is there any gap between what is what we are proving using some axiomatic system that means you start with fundamental axioms and then you use some kind of transformation rules some kind of uh, natural principles that you use in the logic modus ponens modus tollens etc. And then you prove something that means the last step of your proof is considered to be a theorem. So uh, is there any gap between what we can prove and what what is true about uh, let us say natural numbers etc and all that means whatever is uh, provable is not true or whatever is true is not provable then there is a gap and all. So if that is the case then the system is called as incomplete but in the case of propositional logics this problem will not arise there are no gaps. So propositional logics is considered to be complete consistent etc. And the other question that uh, computer scientists must be interested in is what is the uh, connection between logic and computability. Now. So we will not talk much about uh, this particular kind of thing but we will try to cover the first three things. So let us start uh, this thing with a with some kind of motivating example the one which we use it in day to day discourse we have said in the beginning of this lecture that proposition logic also covers some of the important things related to arguments related to day to day discourse. So it is an interesting example uh, one, uh, there was some uh, robbery in which lots of goods were stolen and we are trying to find out who is the convict in all here who is considered to be guilty here. So these are the conditions which are uh, given the robbers uh, left in a truck after uh, stealing everything and all in the bank they might have steal, stolen something goods etc they left in a truck and all and our information uh, uh, has this particular kind of things and all. So the, we have seen only three robbers uh, running away from stealing everything etc and all. So nobody else could have been involved other than instead of naming them it is A, B, C and all. So that is the first thing which we know at least some information that we know and we also know that somehow the history of this uh, this culprits and all guilty people are uh, robber, robbers and all some information we have maybe. So C never commits a crime without A's participation and all that means whenever C does some kind of thing A will always be there and all that is what we are sure of that means C will not commit any robbery etc and all unless is participation is there. So they will be coordinating with each other nicely and all so C and A will always be there in that particular kind of site wherever the robbery has taken place that is one thing which we know and the third thing which we know is this thing B does not know how to drive that means after let us say he has stolen lot of money and all but he himself cannot drive and all that means only maybe uh, A and C knows driving and all. But in this case uh, maybe he might have to depend upon A and C and all. he himself cannot drive. So that means uh, suppose if he is alone and all then uh, he cannot uh, he will be caught and all. So now uh, using this information and all how do we know that uh, whether or not he is innocent or he is guilty and all. So in this case uh, uh, the, the letters that you are seeing here A, B, C etc and all. So they all stands for A means A is guilty, B means B is guilty, C means C is guilty and all. Of course you can say you might say that you know I will take I will represent guilty as uh, uh, not A and all you can do it in that way as well uh, but uh, in general we treat whosoever is involved in, in a robbery is, is found to be guilty only. So A B C is means A is guilty, B is guilty, C is guilty etc and all. Suppose if you say not A, not guilty means he is innocent and all that is the opposite of that one. So we are already used some kind of connectives and all. 
So, now uh, you can say that this, this puzzle or problem can be solved you can use some kind of mental reasoning etcetera and all you do some kind of exercise and then you can come up with your answer and all that seems to be very difficult and all. So, it will be very difficult uh, if you do not have some kind of symbolic form and all. So, this is what has taken place in the history of mathematics in particular ancient in the ancient days in the period of Egyptians. So, they do not have uh, uh, they do not have any knowledge of the unknown numbers and all they were all struggling about uh, this particular important thing what adds to one fifth of its number leads to 17 and all. So, they struggle for more than 200 years because they do not have this uh, concept of unknown number you know. So, these days if you ask even uh, 6 class uh, student he will be easily able to answer this particular kind of thing and all. The problem there was is that there were no symbols that are available to them they did not they did not think in that direction and all. So, only after 200-300 years after their uh, contribution to the mathematics and people could solve this particular kind of problems and all. So, what I am why I am saying this particular kind of thing is this because this fact that if you do not have some kind of symbolic form and all things will become very messy and all. You might say that there are only three sentences I can do it I can mentally calculate I can mentally know what is going to be the answer and all. If the number of propositions increases and all or information is uh, big enough then uh, the best way to represent it is in terms of some kind of symbolic form and all. So, this motivates us to study uh, the, the propositional logics and all if you want to know whether A is innocent and A is guilty etcetera and all we, you have to represent it in terms of appropriate language that language could be like this. So, depending upon the sentences we translate the uh, sentences that uh, occur in this puzzle into the appropriate language of propositional logic and then we will see when these three sentences are simultaneously happen to be true and all when these three sentences satisfies and all that means when these three sentences taken together is going to be true and all. So, that gives us some kind of answer for this particular kind of thing and all. So, this no one no one else could have been involved other than A and B and C means either A has to be there B has to be there or C has to be there and all there is no other kind of thing D is not there. So, A or B or C that is the one with which you can represent the first sentence and the second sentence is represented as C never commits a crime without A's participation that means C is, C is important for A and all presence is important for A's, A's presence is important for C and all. So, this can be uh, translated into C implies A and all. So, it is like a sufficient kind of condition and all. So, the third one is this that B does not know how to drive that means uh, B requires help of uh, either A or C and all. So, in the first case uh, it is like this B implies either B has to be with A and all so that he can run away or B has to be with C and all has to coordinate with C. So, that uh, he can run away from that site and all after stealing everything you know. So, now once you represent this thing into this particular kind of formulas and all then we will come to know when these three formulas are jointly true and all. So, when under what context they are all consistent to each other etcetera and all we will we will solve this problem a little bit later, but I will postpone this problem to for a while. Uh, then once we talk about either truth tables uh, or some kind of semantic method or some other kind of method we will come back to this particular kind of problem, but our basic uh, uh, thing uh, basic idea that I am trying to give is, is that when you when you have some problems like this and once you represent it in terms of uh, some kind of uh, symbolic form and all and you use principles of propositional logic then you can solve this particular kind of problem. You know. So, if you are little bit impatient etcetera and all the answer for this thing is is that A is considered to be guilty and all. So, how do we know that A is guilty there are some methods with which you can show that A is guilty follows from this particular kind of information now. So, one way of doing it is these are the three propositions that we have P 1, P 2, P 3 etcetera for example, for the time being we consider in that way P 1 and P 2 and P 3 are all leads to some kind of tautology now statement which is obviously true you know. If you can show that that is a tautology then instead of showing that this is a T and all what we have to show is this particular kind of thing you know. 
let us say the first sentence is represented as P1 and the second sentence is represented as P2 and P3 this is the information that we have and this all should lead to suppose if uh, A is guilty means guilty means uh, it should be like this and A is innocent innocent means it is not A and all. innocent and guilty are opposite to each other and all. So if you can show that this whole thing P1 and P2 and P3 all these sentences implies that A, A means guilty and all. if you can show that this is a tautology that means under all interpretations of P1, P2, P3 whatever values that you assign to the variables that occurs here it is always true then you can say that A is considered to be guilty and all. So if you want to show that A is guilty you have to show that that particular formula which is there in the brackets is uh, should be a tautology and all if it is not a tautology then A is not said to be guilty and all so that is one way of proving it there are there are varieties of ways which we, with which you can show that A is guilty follows from this particular kind of information. So one important method that we will be using a little bit later is uh, the semantic tablox method. So this is the motivating example which uh, leads us to study the propositional logics there are lots of puzzles uh, we will be talking about some other puzzles a little bit later which are cooked up by a famous logician Raymond Smullyan. Uh, he has he constructed wonderful puzzles uh, which are uh, which come under the category of knights and they use puzzles and all. So these puzzles uh, goes like this. So you have to imagine an island in which there are only two kinds of inhabitants and all. So let us say type A and type B. So type A always talks truths, type B always tells lies and all. So for example, if you ask type A who always tells truths, his two plus two is equal to four they will say true yes it is and if you if you ask the same question to the knaves which are of different types which are a different type they will answer is 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 they will say no uh, suppose in the same way if you ask them is 2 plus 2 is equal to 5 knaves will answer yes. So knaves always lies and knights always tells truths you know it is not the case that knaves all knaves tells truths you know so a liar cannot tell truths you know that is the condition that is there you now. So now Raymond Smullyan constructed lots of puzzles in which your a stranger goes to this particular kind of island and he asks some kind of questions you know he wants to find out what type he is whether he is an A whether he is a knave or he is a knight and all. For example if a stranger goes to an island and the stranger says the, the inhabitant says let us say a says I am not a knave and all and B says I am a knight and all so based on that particular kind of information so what is that you are going to infer and all so these are some of the puzzles again which are represented by the language represented in the language of propositional logic and then once you represent it in terms of propositional logic and things will become simpler and all we can solve it with using basically semantic tablox method especially these knights and knaves puzzles and all. So basically what is that I am trying to say is simply this that there are some kind of puzzles which you can solve with the help of uh, the propositional logic and then uh, there are some instances like the one which we have seen earlier uh, and there are some other things like uh, how the complex uh, digital circuits can be simplified into simplified digital circuits by using the principles of propositional logic etc. So far I have discussed only the background of this propositional logic I have not discussed the origin of propositional logics in a different context I will talk about in the history of logic I will cover how this propositional logics have originated and all basically it began with Boole in the mathematical analysis of logic and then Frege Russell Whitehead advanced it further and then there are some developments of Gödel etc all these things which we will be trying to cover basically from 1890s to 1930s and all so those are the developments that we will be covering uh, under proposition logics. So now uh, every language has its own uh, syntax and its own semantics and all the languages that we are trying to talk about they are considered to be formal languages and all. 
So, what do we mean by a formal language? Why, in what sense, it is distinct from the natural languages like uh, English, uh, Hindi, Urdu, whatever it is? A formal language consists of a set of symbols. Those symbols can be they are the ones which you usually choose. Uh, whatever symbols you can take into consider, but you fix those symbols in the beginning of uh, uh, constructing your language and all. So you have some symbols. In this case, P's, Q's, R's, etc., and all, and then you have some rules which tells us how these symbols are constructed, and then you can form some kind of grammatically correct strings of symbols in that particular kind of language. For example, in English language, we have some alphabets to begin with A to Z, and then this A to Z some different alphabets combine together and form some kind of words let us say cat mat etc and all. So, these words combine together in a certain way and form some kind of grammatically meaningful sentence and all. For example, if you say cat is on the mat and all it makes sense for us and all uh, to talk about these kinds of things and all, which is constituted out of alphabets a to z and then cat is another word which we know may be concept mat is another concept cat is on the mat is considered to be a grammatically correct sentence and all. or you can even say mat is on the cat it is also usually we do not say that but you will say you can say that also. But if you say mat cat on is and all and any uh, child can easily recognize that it is not a grammatically well formed kind of sentence and all. So, how do we know that it is a grammatically correct sentence grammatically incorrect sentence we have to learn some kind of gram, grammatical rules with which you can judge whether it is grammatically uh, correct or not. In the same way in the language of uh, in the formal language in particular we have some symbols and we know how these symbols are combined together and form some kind of a string. So, this string is defined in this particular kind of sense a string or a word just like you know cat is a string which consists of C A T and all in the English language we have a string called P Q R implies X etc and all. A string or a word in a formal language is any finite sequence of the symbols in the language especially. Uh, so, we include in uh, an empty string also as uh, consisting which consists of no symbols at all that is also considered to be a string and all which, do, which will not have any symbol and all. Examples of strings are there may be thousands of things which you, we have uh, what we have are simply like this we have some propositional variables p q s r s etc and all and uh, we have logical connectives or implies uh, uh, negation if and only if etc and all and out of this uh, logical connectives and this thing and then we have parentheses etc which tells us um, which are punctuation marks just like in the in the case of english language we have comma full stop etc and all we have parentheses and all which tells us that you know how to read a given well formed formula when a formula is considered to be a well formed formula. So, P R P Q and then closed by right parenthesis in the first case implies P Q R they are all strings and all, but not all strings are considered under the category of well formed formula and all. For example, if you say cat C A T cat makes some kind of sense to us we know the concept of cat we know that it is seems to be a correct string and all. It can be T A C also or A C T or something like that. So, you can even talk about this particular kinds of things, you know. but that is not a meaningful kind of word which we know. In the same way, in the formal language, if you say P or P Q and close by some kind of parenthesis, uh, then uh, then that is not a, a meaningful kind of uh, a well well formed string and all. So, there are thousands of strings which we can form and all using symbols and logical connectives, etc. Then, then the, the question arises is uh, what is considered to be uh, a meaningful kind of string and all, or in this case, it is well formed formula and all. So, these are the things that we are trying to begin with. We have propositional variables uh, which can be infinite and all because there are so many sentences which we can express it in terms of formal language. So, we our symbols are also exhaustive and all. Although it is finite, but you can even take it as infinite also p1, p2, pn, and all these things. And if it is exhausted, you can use q1, q2, something. We have n number of natural numbers, you can use that. 
So, we often use usually P Q R s etcetera and all to represent the prepositional variables. Suppose if you say it is raining and it is not raining it is represented as R and not R. So, symbols uh, uh, for the prepositional we have prepositional connectives negation R and implies and if and only if we need to talk about how this uh, what we mean by these connectives and all when we talk about semantics we talk about this. Thing. So, we do not we are not worried about the meaning of this uh, connectives at this moment in the syntax what we will be interested in is we just know how these formulas are generated and all it is just like uh, start uh, trying to build a building and all. Suppose if you are trying to build a building and what you need is a raw material that is bricks uh, concrete and cement etc and all you just mix it and all and then later you know fine uh, kind of uh, uh, restructuring etc that you that it involves it involves some kind of uh, with that you can say that it is analogous to semantics you know. So, in addition to the symbols and logical connectives we have parentheses the left hand left parenthesis you have a comma or full stop or you have a right parenthesis and all parenthesis tells us how to read a, a given formula and all. So, now uh, with this I think I uh, will close this lecture and all we have we need to now we have generated lots of strings etcetera and all. So, now we need to talk about what we mean by a well formed formula and all. So, how do we know that uh, a particular string is considered to be the well formed formula and all there should be some kind of definition with which you can talk about or decide about when you can say that a given formula is a well formed formula and all. So, this is the definition a definition goes like this every propositional variables p q r etcetera and all these things are considered to be a well formed formula and all. whatever variable that occurs is considered to be a well formed formula an empty string is also considered to be a well formed formula which is not uh, nothing is there that is also considered to be a well formed formula. And all. And if A is a well formed formula if assuming that uh, there is an atomic sentence which is obviously well formed formula if you add negation in the left hand side that is also considered to be a well formed formula. And in the same way if A and B are uh, two atomic propositions and uh, which are considered already considered to be well formed formulas that means they are propositional variables as is the case of first uh, rule tells us. And then not A is a well formed formula, A and B is a well formed formula which is in put in left and right parenthesis, A or B is also considered to be well formed formula, A implies B is also considered to be a well formed formula. Now. So, the fourth rule tells us that nothing is a well formed formula which does not follow these three rules and all. So, for instance, uh, finally, uh, we will uh, see uh, that, uh, for example, if you have a particular kind of sentence like uh, P1. P1 implies not uh, something like uh, P2 not uh, implies P R R and all. For example, if you have this whole complex sentence like this, so this is a string and all. Definitely, this is called as a string because it is generated out of uh, your symbols and logical connectives. And all. But this is not a not considered to be a well-formed formula because of this thing. It is not constructed out of the four rules that we have said. Only three rules appears here, but the fourth rule is implicit in this one. That is, nothing is a well-formed formula which is doesn't follow these things and all. So it is none of it is not in this particular kind of format. So it is not considered to be well-formed formula. So in this class, what we have discussed is simply like this. We we presented the basic idea of propositional logic. That means what we are trying to do in the propositional logics, and then we started with the syntax. And then we talked about what we mean by a meaningful string and all mean not meaningful string when you say that a given well formed formula uh, when 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 do we say that a given formula is considered to be a well formed formula and all. So that means you have generated thousands of strings strings and all not all strings are all of importance to us just like cat uh, cat is one word which we use we do not use tac etc and all in English. So, in the same way we we have some kind of meaningful uh, so we have some kind of strings which are important to us so these rules uh, the definition gives us some kind of idea of uh, whether or not a given formula is a well formed formula or not once we have well formed formulas then you can talk about whether or not this given well formed formula is a valid or it's a tautology all these things you can talk about it little bit later so with this we will end this lecture